intentions, I'd say the most important part of your journey because it won't make any sense for you to do this if it's not going to be accepted by Allah. And Allah accepts only that which is done for His sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they say that the book of Allah is one whose speech you will never get bored of. You will never get tired of it. You will never feel as if you've had enough. If you want the dunya upon you is the Quran, if you want the akhirah upon you is the Quran, and if you want both of them together upon you in the Quran, and I guess the only one who knows this is the one who has tried it. Don't believe us, try it, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear viewers from all around the world. Welcome back to another episode of the Reverses podcast by Tartil. And it's a podcast that we have, I'm sure a lot of you are aware and you're following us. And for those who are not, I'll just, inshallah ta'ala, just give you an insight. It is a podcast that we have put together in order to help our brothers and sisters become inspired to start their journey with the Quran. And if they have already, for them, inshallah ta'ala, to even be inspired even more. And we have three segments. The first segment is a caller that calls in and speaks to us. We have a conversation and perhaps we get to hear about some of the things they're doing, answer any questions they may have. The second segment is a segment of nasiha, advice. Advice is very important for a person who's memorizing the Quran. And so we provide advice that a person is in need of and everybody else can benefit from as well. And the final part is a hafid of the Quran that speaks to us firsthand and tells us about their life with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to get started straight away and we're going to invite on our brother, Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Abdul Rahman. Kayf haluk, Abdul Rahman? Alhamdulillah, tamam. Kayf haluk, ya Shaykh. Allah yahfadak, ya Abdul Rahman. Ana bi khair, jazakallahu khairan. نتكلم بالعربي أم بالإنجليزي؟ أفضل بالإنجليزي يا شيخ أفضل بالإنجليزي؟ طيب طيب خلاص uh, Where are you calling from? Currently I'm in Nottingham, England Currently you're in Nottingham Okay, عبد الرحمن yeah. How much Quran have you memorized so far? I've memorized approximately 20 جزء 20 so جزء ما شاء الله and may Allah bless yeah. you to complete the rest it's a wonderful achievement Ameen, Alhamdulillah Abdul Rahman you have any questions for us? Um, I don't know I guess my biggest question would be because currently I'm in my last year of school so I want to know like what, what do you think would be the most effective way to balance mm -hmm. memorizing Quran and like doing my muraja at the same time as my studies at the same time you know the most important thing, Abdul Rahman, uh, before I tell you uh, the answer to your question, what's your method right now? So right now, um, I have I have a sheikh that I call maybe like once or twice a week, and I read the new things that I have memorized. Where is he from? Then, is he with you in the UK? No, he's in Bahrain. Bahrain. Okay, fine. Yeah, because like that's where I started my. Um, memorization of the Quran mm -hmm. so I just kept it up with him because I couldn't really find like a local sheikh or an imam here that could help okay. me or that I could continue with in person okay fair enough yeah so um, yeah I just call him maybe once or twice a week and then he listens to me and he gives me feedback and then on the weekends I would usually call my mom and sometimes she would listen to me like maybe one or two juz a day depending on time and availability really? etc okay yeah mm. yeah okay that's your method so at the moment okay so it, it definitely looks like a good method because you memorize 20 juz you memorize yeah. a decent amount so it doesn't look yeah. like a bad method because whatever you're doing it's working yeah. clear yeah uh, what your advice that you need uh, and before i answer it can you just repeat your question my uh, my question was, how do you think the best way would be to balance it when exams are coming up? And I also need to make sure that I don't forget the Quran that I've already memorized. Jameen. Okay, so a lot of the scholars, I've heard them personally say in this field that you need a khutta. Khutta. And you speak Arabic, right? Okay. You know khutta. Yeah, yeah. Plan, right? Yeah, plan. A plan that you follow. So... You yeah. have a plan. I am going to be finishing my studies this year at school, for example, or college or university. Uh, therefore, yeah. there's a certain amount of time I need to dedicate until 
uh, X amount of time this month because that's when my exams are going to be. And the Quran as well, I also don't want to neglect it and push it to a side. I also need to make sure I memorize the Quran and I revise as much as I can. Now, it could be that you don't balance it, but you make the studies a little bit more than the Quran. Obviously, that's not yeah. the ideal thing for us to do. We understand that. But yeah. because you're time bounded with your studies, you don't also want to feel that you have neglected your studies and therefore you're going to fail and so on. Although the person who's close yes. to the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala will grant them openings. But no yeah. harm in this period of time, maybe mm. the Quran time, and the studies, you make the studies a little bit more just because you want to clear the studies in a period of time. And yeah. then after you can go back to the Quran, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem yeah. would come, not when we're given the Quran less time, but when we're given the Quran no time. And I've seen a lot of yeah. the brothers and sisters do this. I've seen brothers and sisters who have exams. So they put the Quran completely on pause. I'm sure mm. you've seen this as well. They stop yes, it completely yes. and then they focus on their studies and it may take them a long time. And then after their studies, guess what? They don't even come back to the Quran. Because they've yeah. been out of it for so long It's hard to get back into the routine You see That's yeah, the worry You don't want to do that What you want to do is You know what No matter what Exams No exams Family No family Commitments No commitments The Quran doesn't disappear oh, I may yeah. reduce the time a little bit Just because I'm stuck with my exams No problem but you don't want to let go of it completely And the scholars they say That which can't be achieved completely You shouldn't leave the majority of it If I can't achieve the full amount of time of Quran I don't leave all of it I do what I can inshallah That's yeah. what I would say to you Make a khutbah, okay. make a plan And then if you are very restricted with time Because of your exams No harm reducing the time of the Quran a little bit Like we said earlier We don't normally do this But we do it now because yeah. we have this deadline we want to meet And then after that we move on inshallah ta'ala Barakallahu feek Abdul Rahman I'm going to move on to the next caller Because we have a lot of people who are with us no And it's our brother Muhammad Kamran Jazakallahu khairan Abdul Rahman wa iyakum Barakallahu feek Hey I just wanted to take a moment out In the middle of this podcast To give you guys a quick message so if you're a regular listener of Reverses, you'll know that one of the most common questions we get asked is about how to structure and manage and organize your memorization and revision. Questions about at what point of the day, questions around how much to revise, how much to memorize and how to set that plan. The great thing with Tartil is that we have a memorization planner right within the app. So you could just head over to the gold section of the app and you can let it know that you want to memorize or revise or recite a portion of Quran and it will give you a plan to follow and not only does it just give you a plan to follow but you can actually go into the app every time click start session and it will log your session so that you can see that you're sticking to the plan and you can see the plan through so for example let's say that you want to revise a juz of quran every day well then you could just go into tartil and set a goal to recite a juz you can select the portion so let's say for example you've memorized the last five ajaza of the quran you can select those last five ajaza you can say i want to revise those ajaza every single day what out of those one juz you then create your goal and it will create a system and a plan for you to go in every day click start session and you can start revising so there we have it another cool way to use Tartil AI to ensure you have a stronger connection with the Quran now let's get back to the episode Assalamu alaikum Muhammad Kamran Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah how are you Sheikh Jamal Barakallahu feek I'm very well have I pronounced your name correctly Gigi, gee, gee. Uh, in fact, uh, I called earlier. Maf, I just uh, wanted to ask a few questions because I forgot to ask earlier Hope you don't no mind. problem, inshallah ta'ala. Go ahead. If you ask them in one go, it'll be better. Sure. Um, my question is uh, just about uh, what uh, tips would you uh, give me to basically to level up my tajweed, as I mentioned earlier, any specific reciter that I can focus on specifically to uh, uh, level up my tajweed. And also, uh, what would you say is the the best the best way to balance out uh, studies and uh, quran okay did you just hear the the person before you our brother abdurrahman did you hear that or no uh no no not really okay you didn't hear it because i had just answered the same question just before so i'm going to answer your tajweed one first the tajweed one myself and sheikh musa have answered this a lot of times the tajweed the Best Sheikh or from the best of Shuyukh, let's say that people advise is Sheikh Al Husari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, also Sheikh Al Manshawi, and there are others as well. But these are the ones that normally come up that are always 
recommended. But you need to make sure you have a teacher. Without a teacher, even if you listen to the best shuyukh, you're not going to be able to make sure that you are reading the best and most correct way because you need someone to correct you. You need someone to let you know that you're doing it right. So a teacher will be the best tip. Listen to Sheikh Al-Husari, Al-Manshawi, uh, and maybe others that are like them, but make sure that you have a teacher, inshallah ta'ala, that is a expert in Tajri that can help you, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. With regards to balancing, we've answered this so many times. I've just literally answered it with the brother before you but no harm us summarizing it here as well make sure that you give both of your duties the same time meaning both of them time it doesn't have to be the same time but time so i give the quran daily time yes. i give my studies daily time i give my work daily time but you can decide based on how important each one is the amount of time so maybe the quran is one hour maybe the studies is half an hour maybe the studies is one hour I can't advise you specific advices uh, because I would need to know a lot more about what you're doing. But the general yes. advice would be that we make sure that every single day we dedicate time to the book of Allah amongst the other things that we are doing. And we don't let a day go by. Even if it is 10 minutes, yeah, Sheikh Muhammad, you make sure that you make sure, you make sure that you make sure that you do this, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khairan, uh, Muhammad Kamran. It's lovely to have spoken with you twice today. Jazakallah khairan. We're going to go to our next caller, inshallah ta'ala. It's our brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Shaykh. How are you, Muhammad? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm good, Shaykh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. Thank you for asking. Jazakallah khairan for calling in. May Allah bless you and be pleased with you. Amen. Okay, so Muhammad, talk to us inshallah ta'ala. Muhammad's journey with the Qur'an. How is it looking? Where have you reached? What have you achieved? Um, Alhamdulillah, I've managed to memorize four juz. I started in August when I, um, my Qur'an journey. But before that, I memorized two juz. And that was just 15 and 16, half of like both. And Masha'ala. I memorized juz amma. And, and now Alhamdulillah, I've memorized the first juz and the second juz. MashaAllah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah that Allah made it easy for you to go back to it. That's wonderful. So, any questions you have for us now? Now, how, how can I keep my intentions correct through my Qur'an journey? Beautiful, beautiful question. Very important one as well and it always comes up. Uh, we get this question asked a lot. Intentions are the most, I'd say, the most important part of your journey because it won't make any sense for you to do this if it's not going to be accepted by Allah. And Allah accepts only that which is done for His sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'd say there's three times you need to target in terms of your intention. Before the action, during the action, and after the action. Anytime you approach the Qur'an, before you get started, refresh your intentions. Make a clear intention. Make an intention firstly, if you haven't already. And then if you have, then refresh it. Make sure that you are doing it only for the sake of Allah. Istihdar and niyyah, it means that everything else is pushed away. Everyone else is pushed away. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then during, you don't want to have waswas or be paranoid as well, but during the recitation, in case anything diverts your intention away from Allah or your sincerity, just remind yourself that you're doing this for Allah's sake and try to block anything out. And then after that, just have a review when you finish the action. Was this for the sake of Allah? Like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he built the Kaaba with his son Ismail, when he finished, you see what I'm saying about finishing? When he finished, what did he say? Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. Oh Allah, accept it from us, me and my son. So he wants to make sure that this is done for only for Allah's sake. Rabbana taqabbal minna. So you also do the same thing, inshallah ta'ala. That's a nice way of just looking at your action before, during, and afterwards in terms of intentions. Barakallahu alaykum, Shaykh. And one more question. No problem, go ahead. How, what, what would you say to someone if they started their Qur'an journey with incorrect con- intentions, but they did it un- unknowingly? No problem. Now that you know, don't do that again. Don't repeat it. And what you don't know, what you do without knowing, unknowingly, Allah will forgive, inshallah. If it wasn't intentional and you weren't aware, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, Allah jalla wa'ala will forgive you for mistakes and that which you do unknowingly like the hadith has come. Barakallahu feekum ya Muhammad. We're now going to move on to the segment of our nasiha, our advice, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. There are so many things that we can mention about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the book of Allah jalla wa'ala. We will 
finish speaking and what we have to speak about will not finish. What can we say about the Quran today in this episode? It is that the scholars, they say that the book of Allah is one whose speech you will never get bored of. You will never get tired of it. You will never feel as if you've had enough. Uthman ibn Affan from the Sahaba, a great companion, the third best Muslim, in fact, after the prophets, he used to say, لَوْ طَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ if your hearts were pure, you will never be satisfied from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never. Imagine something that you just want more and more and more and more and you don't become sick, you don't become tired. Uh, whatever we get in this dunya, there's a limit that we can have. We are limited, we're human beings. But the book of Allah, no. So long as we are healthy spiritually, subhanAllah, we would need more, we would want more, we would desire more. We will never ever suffice with something being enough. But this goes back to the heart. And Allah tells in the Quran that this is where the Quran resides, in the hearts of the people. The Quran is clear cut verses and it is found within the hearts, within the chests of those who have been given knowledge. Allah says, Allah revealed it to your heart, O oh Muhammad. So to ensure that we purify the heart as much as possible, that we look after our hearts, that from our hearts, we try our best to make room for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's dusty, if it's not in good shape, we make sure that we purify it, we cleanse it inshallah. And then we will find the Quran being something we are longing for. As soon as you put it down, you want to pick it up again. It will be something that is always with you wherever you are, bi'idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran a part of our lives day in and day out and make us inseparable from his book until he reunites us with the Prophet وسلم, the Imam and the leader of all of mankind and the greatest soul to have ever ever become close to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jazakumullahu khairan that's it for me for this segment and we're going to move on to the next segment where we are going to have a half of call in inshallah ta'ala Muhammad Umar Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh How are you Muhammad? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'm also well. You memorize the Quran? Um, uh, Alhamdulillah, yes, I'm still strengthening. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. May Allah Jalla wa'ala allow you to complete the Quran's revision and allow you to solidify it and allow you to achieve more than what you intend to achieve. Inshallah ta'ala, it's beautiful. Even if you memorize the Quran, there may be gaps. It's still beautiful that you got to the end of the road. Alhamdulillah. So my go question ahead, was, uh, was uh, how do I um, go about trying to attain the, the manners of the people of the Quran? Okay, how do I go about attaining the manners of the people of the Quran? I would say try your best to read about it. Do you understand Arabic? Uh, yes. Okay, so you heard of the book at tibyan Fi Adabi Hamalat Al-Quran by Imam Al-Nawawi? Yes, I just finished studying actually. Yeah. Okay, Jameel. Now it's about implementation. Now it's about acting by what you have learned. Al Imam Al Ajurri, he also has a, a book that's similar that speaks of the akhlaq of the people of the Quran. These are the books that you have to study and go through and take your time to implement it. Now, these books, when you go through them, it's very important that you take it bit by bit. So, what do I mean by that? A lot of people, they study them from cover to cover, they finish the books. But it's more about for them just reading and studying, but they don't implement. But these books have been designed to be implementation books. Meaning, okay, today this is what we have learned. This is what I need to now give time to. Even if I leave the book for a few weeks, I need to implement this first point. Once I implement it, I start it, I make it a part of my life. Next point, next point. You see, when you do it like this, then it becomes a part of who you are. And this is how even the Sahaba, they interacted with the Quran. I'm sure you've heard Umar radiallahu anhu. There's also reports on his son, Ibn Umar. They spent so much time on Surah Al-Baqarah. You heard this, right? Surah Al-Baqarah, years upon years, they were studying it. Because they weren't just memorizing it. They were making sure they implemented everything every part like the quran itself five verses five verses they would understand memorize it understand it implement move on some of the reports 10 verses understand memorize understand implement move on with these books you've just finished studying it my best advice would be try your best to implement it bit by bit quality by quality characteristic by characteristic inshallah and something that's uh, i guess obvious but a lot of people don't do it is dua dua ask allah to perfect your character 
You know, this is a dua that we should make. Oh Allah, the same way you have perfected my creation, perfect my character is a dua from the sunnah. We should make this dua all of the time. Oh Allah, give me the character of the people of the Quran. Oh Allah, make me like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's so powerful. You reach the level where people are now witnessing for you that you are a person who has the character of the Quran. That requires practice and it requires dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah give it to you and I and all of the brothers and sisters. Uh, Muhammad, you're still with us? Yes, Barakallah Fiqh, that answered my question. Has th that helped, yeah? Okay, yes, do you have any other questions? Uh, one small question is, uh, I tend to make mistakes in um, uh, the ending of certain words when they, for example, an example I can give to clarify is, for example, Hayat al-Dunya, I might get confused if it's Kasra Hayat al-Dunya, mm -hmm. or, or Sayyia, when if, it, if it's Kasra or Fatha. So uh, this is the most mistakes I make ten in, uh, in my memorization. So is there any advice for the, this small tip? There's no advice except repetition, repetition, repetition. The tongue will get used to it if you keep repeating it and the tongue will be able to differentiate. This is this, this is this one. This is dhamma, this is kasra, this is like this. I had a lot of examples like that when I was memorizing the Quran, subhanAllah. But I realized after the more I spent time with revision and repeating that the only way to distinguish between all of these things, and we always mention this, is to keep repeating the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ta'ahadu hadha alquran fa huwa alladhi nafsu muhammadin bi yadihi la huwa ashaddu tafallutan min alibri fi uqulha review the quran and again and again otherwise it's going to start getting confusing and resembling parts with other parts and you're going to start forgetting and it's going to escape from your memory so in order for you to make sure that doesn't happen he said review the quran again and again that's how you do it there's no other way Barakallah Fiqh. So do you have any advice for the people who are listening to you? Uh, you did memorize the Quran, you said, uh, but you are just making sure that you said you're solidifying, etc. Uh, so do you have any advice for the brothers and sisters, people who uh, can be listening to you right now, maybe listening, but can benefit from your journey? Anything that you want to advise them that you may have done wrong when you were doing it? Anything that helped you? So I think these mistakes I mentioned were because I started memorizing COVID, so... I, I try to memorize by myself, so that's why I'm trying to still uh, take out these mistakes. So first advice would be find a teacher, and mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. And then secondly is, um, like you said, repetition. Like as, I do as much as khatms as you can, repeat the Quran as much as you can, muraja. And uh, I think a lot of listening also helped me memorize. Like I found a lot of pages because I used to listen to the Harameen a lot. I memorized uh, a lot of pages from just uh, listening to them before I even uh, reached the, the surah, for example. Like I remember once I was listening to Sheikh Mahir Ma'iqli reading Surah Maryam, and because I listened to that recording so many times without even me like, having the intention to memorize, I realized I memorized a large portion. So, MashaAllah. Uh, and then I would say also, surround yourself with people that are on the same journey. MashaAllah. And, for example, and if you can't surround yourself, there's a lot of good podcasts on like this podcast that can help you see other people's journey. Mashallah. Mashallah. That's wonderful advice. Jazakallahu khairan. And may Allah Jalla wa allow you to continue and to increase on these beautiful efforts that you have come with over the years. And I hope that your dream of making sure that you fill in those gaps and solidify the whole Quran, Allah makes it a reality for you. And inshallah ta'ala, if you do, and I'm still here, inshallah ta'ala, please call back and let us know. I'm sure everybody here would want to know how you get on, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallahu khairan. Any last words you want to give? Any pieces of advice? Any, any wisdom? that you want to share I mean, the final thing I could say is uh, if you want the dunya alaykum bil quran upon you is the quran and if you want the akhirah upon you is the quran inshallah Jazakallahu khairan. Beautiful, mashallah. If you want the dunya upon you is the Quran, if you want the akhirah upon you is the Quran, and if you want both of them together upon you in the Quran, he, he is so right. Absolutely true. And I guess the only one who knows this is the one who has tried it. Don't believe us. Try it, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallahu khairan. Uh, Muhammad, we are going to let you go. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And may Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Okay, we heard from our brother Muhammad Umar and with that we are going to conclude this episode of Reverses. Alhamdulillah, it was lovely to hear some more insights from a half of the Quran. It always is, even for myself, because everybody has their own unique journey and it's good to share notes with other people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless all of the other brothers and sisters. And until the next episode, we leave you with the amana and the peace and the safety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.